For this final portion of the exercise, we want to focus on the inside panel where we're going to put each of the different products and their descriptions for your catalog. Now, to do this, make sure you've got access to your products and also the product description. And this is found underneath the or inside of the folder with all of the product details that you can download from the class page. By now, you should have also created all of the vector clipping paths inside of Photoshop for each of your products too. You can see how I've got them all established inside of Photoshop, so I can close this out. Next, we'll jump back into InDesign, and I need to get rid of this background uh, template information. It's going to get in my way, so I'm going to go up to my Layers panel. And I'm simply going to uncheck the visibility for the document template layer. This will give us a nice clean sheet. Now since this is the inside, there are some fold lines that I can pay attention to, but for the most part, I can just treat this as an open, solid spread, because if I was to use this as a catalog, I'd be viewing it as a single page. The hard part is knowing how and where to place all of your different layouts for each individual product. We want to be able to make sure there's plenty of space between them, but also we want it to look nice and organized. The easiest way to do this would be to establish some sort of grid network of rows and columns using all of your guidelines. Now in the class instructions, I'm going to give you a copy of this uh, little diagram. This will give you some ideas for how you can set up a grid and place different things within this spread. Notice at the very top of each one, I'm telling you the number of rows and columns. So in this case, it's a zero by eight. So no rows, but eight columns. And you can see how you can place the products and gives you some dummy lines for your copy. A two by four grid will give you eight individual sections to place things, or a three by three will give you nine sections. Now the best part about grids is that you can pick and choose these, and some of these you can play around with the placement of them. Sometimes, however, you may have some open space, and in this case, I'm giving you indication of what you can do with that open space. You can do things like place a logo, a picture, any other kind of design to fill in that area while still maintaining open areas for the rest of your products. So with this done, I'm going to create, say, a 4x3 grid. I'm going to use this particular layout for my design. To create a grid, you can go up to Layout, down to Create Guides, and this is going to give you a dialog box which you can type in that area. So I want to have four rows, and we don't need a gutter or we don't need any space between it, so I'll set that to zero, and I'm going to set it to be eight with zero on top of here. Excuse me, not eight, should be four by three. That's what I want. So with this four by three grid, this will give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, give me 12 individual places to place things. Now I've got 10 donuts, so this gives me easily 10 open areas with two uh, leftover remaining areas. The final thing to be aware of is you want these to be stretched between your margins. In this case, this will give you guides that start right at your page's established margins and are spaced evenly between those. Otherwise, it's going to be spaced all the way to the edge of your page. We'll say OK to this, and now I can work through this guides. Just know, you can set up your own guides however you want, but you can use the suggested ones as a starter point for placing your products. Next, we need to place each of the images inside of our design. I'm going to go up to File and down to Place, I'm going to find my little donut products JPEG, and we'll say open to this. Now by default, this is going to bring in the entire picture. What we want to do next is to create a separate photo for each one of the inside clipping paths. To activate a clipping path with your image selected, you can go up to Object, down to Clipping Path, and open the options. Inside of these options, you can choose the Photoshop path, and then you can choose whichever path that you want for those. And if you turn on preview, this will give you an idea of the one that it's selecting. In my case, I can say OK to this. So now I've got the Von Schweetz. If you want, you can go ahead and scale this down and reframe your picture. I'm going to place it up here. I'm going to make a copy of my picture, so I've still got it here. Let's go up to Object, Clipping Path, Options, and we'll simply choose the next donut. Now remember, when you choose this donut, it's still inside there, it's just outside the boundaries. So you need to click on it and drag it over 
until you can see it. So repeat this process for each of your products, making a copy of your image, going up to Object, Clipping Path Options, and then choose the next clipping path, and then simply drag it over. Once these are all done, I can then kind of group them together nicely and select them all, and I'm going to scale them up. Holding down Shift and Command will scale them up nice and proportionally with each other. I can then take them and place them roughly inside of my catalog where I want them to be. Later on, we can go back and move things around. With this done, now I need to start bringing in the information for each of the donuts. Do be aware that you place the information near the appropriate donut, and since I've got mine mixed around, maybe I'll have to look at my product photos to make sure I've got the correct one. I'm going to start with the Von Schweetz, since that's the first one, and I've got it up here. All I'm going to do for now is simply open up the text document, copy the text, jump back into InDesign, and let's go up and just place our text inside of here for now. I'm not necessarily worried about the styling, but I will style this first, and then once I get this looking the way I want, I can simply copy and paste all of that into the others. So first off, I see that I've got a name that I can put inside of its own text box. I've got a description, which could be in its own text box. I've got the ratings for it, could be its own little text box. We'll put it up here. And finally, of course, I've got the price, which I'll just keep in this text box down here. So now that I've got all of my puzzle pieces, all the different parts that go to this design, let's think about how I can format this so that it can be seen. Obviously, the most important thing is going to be the name of the donut. So I need this to be nice and large and fit within this area, but also be nice and noticeable. Maybe I'll choose a font that's also appropriate. This one looks good. I'll rough it in and make it nice and big. Underneath this, of course, I could have the description. And we do want it to be a font that's still readable. I'll maybe make it a little bit smaller so that it fits in the area. Remember, your font size does not need to go below 8 or 9 points. Anything lower than that, depending on the font, tends to be a little bit too small. Also, I'm going to change it from a sans serif to a, just a regular serif font. Let's do something like Futura Medium. It's bold, it's readable, it's nice and big, and I think it fits well for our style. We can do the same thing for our ratings, so I'll set that to be that font. And with these ratings, I can also do a little bit of editing. Notice that it's all comma delineated, but I've got some nice colons off to the side. Maybe I'll get rid of the words donut ratings, and I'll put each of these on their own separate lines. I can then make these bolder to stand out. So maybe instead of future or medium, we'll do future or bold. Oops, didn't mean to do it for that one. Set that to be medium. So now those have some nice differentiation too as well. Let's bring those size of that down. And last but not least, of course, is the price. Now when I format the price, I want this to also be nice and large. If anything, that's the second most important part of all this information. So I'm going to start off by making it larger, simply because I've got room to do it. And when I, in laying all this out, I see I've got some room down here to fit it in. Now this isn't the only way to, fit, to lay this out. You can work this out depending on the shape of your grid that you created. But since it works well, and I've done this before, maybe I'll pick up the same oops, formatting that I did for this formatting. So I'll pick that up, place it on there, let's do the whole thing. That looks good too. For me personally, I like to also choose the change the, uh, the, the less than a dollar sign parts. And I'm going to make that superscript as well as the dollar sign. Let's make that superscript too. 
So now it really emphasizes the five that's on there. We'll add a little bit of kerning in between both of those. Now it's set off looking really nice. We'll set that and place that in there for all of the others as well. Once you get a style that you like and everything fits well for this particular design, all you have to do is make a copy of this. So I'm selecting all of those. It fits nicely in this area, so if I was to copy everything over, it should fit nicely and play nicely with the other areas. You can see once I do this, maybe I need to move some things around to buy myself a little bit more room, but for the most part, I've roughed it in and works really well. So take some time, go through each little part, and place all of the information where it needs to be. Now that I've got the layout that I like, let's go back to my text document and simply copy and paste over the appropriate information. Again, take it one at a time and do make sure you've got the correct products that match up with this one. In my case, the mutton fudge is this one here, but over here, it looks like it's moved over to this one. There is no particular order that these have to be in, so you can feel free to move these around however you see fit. Now with everything done, it, all I have to do is to focus on the design of the rest of the page. What do I need to place in the uh, middle here, as well as what can I place for the background behind this? Now some of the simplest things we could do is to simply give it a colorful background. The colors can come from your pre-existing color swatches that we set up for the front, or you could even pull some colors from the individual uh, products that you have as well. In my case, maybe I'll use something for the background. I'm going to use just a rectangle tool, and maybe I'll put some rectangles behind each of my squared off area. Remember, use the guidelines that you've established for your grid, but also pay attention to the fold lines that you have for everything else. Now let's see if we can make it stand out just a little bit more. Taking it one at a time, if I wanted to tie this in, first off, maybe I can bring these in so that they're a little bit closer together. And I need to be able to read my text. The dark text on a dark background doesn't ever go well together. So I'm going to choose my text, and instead of it being black, I could set it to be white or paper. Additionally, I can pull in some colors from my product to really tie both of these together. So if I wanted, say, the title of this to pick up on some of those pinks, I can use my eyedropper tool, click once on the pink area that I like, and then when I hover over the text, I can highlight it, and you can see how it automatically fills that in too. I can do the same maybe for this. That's looking pretty good. To add some further depth to this, maybe I could add a special effect like a drop shadow or something to my product to make it stand out, maybe not so so much. We'll space that out just a little bit more. There we go. And let's also pull it in just a bit. And we could do the same for our text as well if necessary, as long as it's nice and readable. In my case, maybe I'll just add a nice line delineating both of those so it's nice and readable. Anywhere that you see fit, you can easily add in the text or change up the style and design that you want. But if you do it for one, you also need to do it for others. Now if I tried to do that for something like this, so my background is pink and also my product is pink, when I change the text, it's not going to show up too well. In this case, maybe I'll make an executive decision to move things around. I'm going to put the swizzle malarkey up here and move this whipple snit down here. Now when I go to change the text, pick up my eyedropper tool. I'll choose maybe some, whoops, excuse me, don't make sure nothing is selected. Pick up some of the color, highlight my text. Now it actually shows up really well as well. 
Again, just like I've done with the others, I can highlight other text, place that onto there. Let's get the price. And then I can choose my type tool and make everything else white. And then of course add my line underneath my product name. Oops, it would help if I have it actually selected to place in there. There we go. We'll add my drop shadow. And to further refine it, if I wanted the background, instead of it being a solid color, this is also where I could add a special effect to it, or I could add a gradient. If you want to add a gradation of color rather than a special effect, the first thing you need to do in your Illustrator document is define the gradient that you want. So in our swatches panel, I'm going to go up to the options and let's make a new gradient. Inside the gradient, here I can double click on any of the color swatches, change my stop color to the swatches that I'm using. In this case, let's make a red to a darker version of the red. So I'll choose red to red. Then I can swap over to my CMYK values and all I'm going to do is bump down that red to be slightly darker don't want it to be 100% black. When I say add, now I've got a nice gradation of color. I can even use my gradient tool to help define the direction that I want for that one. Whoops, excuse me. I think that's looking much nicer and it pops out really well. So take some time and go through each one of these and format them the way you see fit. The last thing I need to do is to figure out what I want to put in the middle up here. Again, it doesn't have to be right here. I could easily move some things around and I could have an open space in the middle down here or I could move things over into a different quadrant. But the easiest thing I think to place would be of course the product's logo. So let's place the logo inside of here, nice and big. Since this is the donut catalog, maybe I'll also place that or do some sort of design for that as well. We'll pull that in from the front of my design, so I'll copy that, paste it into here, and just simply reuse some of the same stuff that we've already got established. With this finished for this product catalog, repeat the same process for the other catalogs that you're creating as well. When you are finished with all of them, simply save it up as a package file. We'll go up to File, down to Package, and step through the process. Do make sure that you've got all of your images linked, and if you're using any fa uh, fancy fonts, that they'll also be packaged in here as well. So we'll say Package, it'll create a folder, I'm going to put it on my desktop. Do be sure to include any linked graphics and your fonts. And if you want, you can also include a PDF print version or a high quality print version, though the PDF is not required. We'll say OK to the font warning. And then you can compress the folder that everything is saved into and upload that to the class page. Remember, you're turning in three separate catalogs, one for each of the different products that you're creating. The front side can look exactly the same, of course, changing out the uh, product name. It does need to include the important text 
and the inside needs to have each of the different products and their descriptions.